Hello everyone, welcome to Skaria.com. I'm Dr. Hena Khan and today we're going to discuss a very significant topic of uh, neurology that is the ataxic conditions or the ataxic disorders. So we usually come across these patients who present to you with an ataxic gait, slurred speech and difficulty in the ocular movements and we're going to discuss what is the underlying cause uh, towards the development of such conditions. The outline of this lecture basically is uh, presented as the sign and symptoms, the clinical features, uh, the underlying pathological or the pathophysiological basis of, for the development of such uh, ataxic conditions would be discussed primarily primarily over here. So we have the uh, subgroups or the subclassifications for this uh, ataxic disorders as the uh, cerebellar disorders. It can be one of the causative factors. Then we have symmetric, focal, uh, inherited uh, ataxias. It can be an autosomal dominant or recessive variety, or even it can be a mitochondrial ataxia. So we must know how to diagnose these cases and we'll go through them one by one in this particular lecture. We'll be discussing cerebell cerebellar ataxia in detail. So we all know that cerebellum is the organ for the coordination and balance. So if there is any, um, any pathophysiology arising in this uh, particular organ, it is going to affect the balance in this uh, particular patient. It can present as a symmetrical ataxia if it is affecting uh, both the lobes of the cerebellum. It can be presented as a focal ataxic condition uh, depending upon if it is affecting one of the lobes of the uh, cerebral cortex. So it would be the underlying pathophysiology which is going to affect the uh, clinical picture in the particular patient. The etiology of cerebellar ataxia is discussed in detail and we can subclassify according to the development of the sign and symptoms into acute, subacute and the chronic variety of the cerebellar ataxia. Then we have the inherited ataxias uh, uh, dependent upon the autosomal dominant, autosomal recessive and then we have the mitochondrial ataxias. The primary groups are basically numbered from 1 to 8 and then we have an episodic kind of ataxia which is also included in this uh, particular group. Uh, primarily we have the episodic ataxia divided into type 1 and type 2 depending upon the duration of the symptoms in this particular case. We'll be dealing with uh, Frederick's ataxia which is one of the variant and then we have the ataxia telangiectasias. These are again congenital in their uh, nature and it is going to affect the vessels congenitally and then manifest as the ataxic conditions in this particular case. Uh, we have another variant of the genetic variety which is known as the mitochondrial ataxias. So all of these ataxias would be discussed in detail in this uh, particular lecture and you can watch this lecture as well as a variety of other medical lectures on our website uh, by subscribing to it and you can even start your free trial right now. So that is the end. Thank you for watching Scaria.com.